First of all, we want to thank everyone for being here. We want to thank the governor. The governor just has been surveying some of the flood damage. I can tell you this, from the moment this flood event hit, that Governor Justice was uh, in contact with Pinal County and Fayette County officials. Uh, we've never had better response in the state of West Virginia, not ever. And the governor is very concerned. He's been examining the damage. He's uh, worried about the creeks and the blockage and the problem. And of course, he's working on trying to get eventually a disaster declaration. So on behalf of the Kanawha County Commission, Governor Justice, thank you. Thank you. I mean, everybody knows that Kent's heart is made of gold and he, he wants the very best for all of us and everything. Uh, Jordan, tell him to cut the engine off. Because <laughs> I'd say these guys here are yeah. driving them crazy. <laughs> Good job. That's why he's the governor. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, you know, there's there's so many levels of, of real tragedy here. I mean, that's just all there is to it. If if you think, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna miss this a little bit maybe, but in Happy Town, correct? Yes, sir. Forty residents, is that correct? Yes, sir, Governor. You know, and five hundred thousand pounds, five hundred thousand pounds of what we are not rightly referring to as debris have been hauled away. Now think about this just for a minute, because this could be any of us. I mean, any of us. You know, at the end of the day, what is that debris? Well, for the most part, it's, it's our lives. It's everything. It's all of our memories. It's photos and all the different times that family's been together, you know. And the very minute that we don't remember that or feel that, then we're not much. And that's all there is to that. And we're really blessed that we don't have a bunch of fatalities. And I can tell you that from my standpoint, you know, the 2016 flood, I've said it many times, but the 2016 flood, you know, it happened right in my back door. Not only mine, but lots of others. And we waited mud. I did. And I saw inloader after inloader come by and just pick up stuff and throw it in the back of a pickup truck or, or a dump truck and off it went. And it was that family's life. And it's, it's sad beyond belief. But the blessing, the blessing that we have here is an incredible response from these folks behind us and bravery and heroism all over, the, all over the chart, and we didn't lose a bunch of lives. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, if you just think about it, now just think about this. I, I did this day after day after day, and you know me well enough to know that I'll make mistakes, but I'll tell you the truth. I'll do that always. Day after day after day, I would drive over there to try to do anything I could do to help. And I would say this prayer over and over and over, or a prayer, that some way, somehow, God above could show me, could show me this little 14-year-old girl that we couldn't find. And, you know, and what I would do is take, a, take my coat and, and I would think, uh, think about it all the time, you know, that I, you know, if God could just some way show me where she was and her, you know, because this family was dying. Six weeks we looked for a 14-year-old little girl and finally found her miles downstream. Now, I'm telling you, this could have been worse, and we could have had loss of life but these folks behind us, who knows how many lives they save. And all of us are going to continue to pull the rope together. All the people that I have the ability to affect anyway, from Homeland Security to, to the Guard, anything and everything that I can do, all these EMS, all the, the people that have come, VOAD and everybody else on the side, you know, it's easy for me because Kent knows. 
just as golden as his heart is, mine is too. And I'm all in. And I'm going to stay. I'm say I'm going to stay all in. You don't have to worry about me. You don't have to worry one second about our effort to get an emergency declaration or our effort to do anything. I'm all in. I've been all in from day one because I mean it when I tell you that West Virginia is the greatest. Our people are the greatest, and I love you. And so, so it, it's it's sad. It's really sad. All of us, each and every one of you should always remember that because it is just really, really bad. And uh, these people are suffering, really suffering. So we want to do any and everything we can do to help. And that's what we're going to do. Governor, since May, if I have this right, you've been in Huntington where there's been flood damage. You've been in the coal fields where right. there's flood damage. And you've been in this today. I mean, what a summer it's been since May. Yeah. Well, it... Uh, you know, when it rains really hard, all that beauty that's beyond belief, you know, the water doesn't have anywhere to go. And and we live on what little flat land that we have. And we could have a choice, you know, we could drive as far back here as we possibly could and live on the top of a mountain somewhere, but we choose not to do that because we want to be able to get to the ball fields, and we want to get to schools, and we want to get to the convenience stores and everything else. And so, in all this beauty, becomes some really tough stuff. And and it's been a tough summer, and it just won't quit raining. Right loud, but, you know, we all we're we're thankful for the rain, but at the same time, it's been a tough summer. Governor, you've gotten the chance to not to see Houston and now Campbell's Creek. Just based on what you've seen, what immediate action do you want to take? Well, I, you know, really and truly, I'm not the guy that that knows every single detail about the immediate action. But here's what I would say to you. I want these people behind me to do every single thing in their power to help those people, every way. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, an emergency declaration, absolutely to, to, to some way, somehow find if there's any way on earth to bring FEMA in, Anything that we can possibly do that puts us back as close to whole as we'll be, you know, that's the, that's that's the underlying thing. You know, whether it be help from the standpoint of the state, you know, it be help from the federal government, whatever it may be that we can try to do, we need to try to do it. And and these people, these people are experts at working all the details and everything. I'm not that expert. These people do that and everything. And they know that, you know, if they got a leader of the band or they've got an incredible, incredible, you know, president and commissioner and, and many, many others, and everybody's pushing and everybody's all in, we'll get there. That's all I can tell you, you know. It, from the local perspective, I can tell you the Governor of Justice immediately ordered the guard out within 15 seconds after we asked him. He immediately ordered an emergency uh, situation declaration for Connell County. And what we're doing now is doing the paperwork, surveys, where you have to try to prove a threshold of damage. And up until that happens, and when that happens, we hope it'll happen, then we'll have FEMA. So the governor's done everything we've asked him to do and more. So the most important thing is for people, as much as they can, to file their surveys and file their damage. Oh, yeah. Things. He's got to do that. Yes. Keep, keep track of every single everything. And... And, and make all the filings. Don't forget anything. Don't forget your time. Don't forget anything and everything. It'll be really, really important as it all adds up. Governor, yes, ma'am. Governor, Steve Beaton's here. I live right down the street here. Right. Um, if we have another hard rain right now, I mean, it could be a normal rain. And uh, I'm not a meteorologist. I'm not a uh, expert in any, any matter, but I think we'd have a major flood again. Because our creeks, this last flood, it just accumulated more sediment, more material on, on top of other material that's already been there. Yeah. And it just kept building and building. And now it's so high, we couldn't take a big hard drain right now. Um, no. I've lost just about everything in my house. And uh, I lived across my car. My car was uh, totally, totally, but. Brand new car, actually. 
going to be anything here. It's either here or there. But right now, if we get to the root of the problem, the root of the problem is we need to dredge every creek we possibly dredge to stop flooding. And I think if we did that all over the state, not just on Campus Creek, we did that, we could probably solve a lot of flooding problems. What was your first name, sir? Steve. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. Let me just say this is Steve, okay? And we've gotten, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not attacking the environmental world, but at the same time, we've gotten, we've gotten overboard ridiculous, to tell you the truth. We got to live here too, don't we? Yeah, that's right. You know, and and really and truly, uh, nobody wants more pristine water. Nobody wants absolutely more cleaner air. I absolutely want just that. I really exactly. do. Exactly. And I know you do too. And because look what we got here. I mean, why would we want anything differently? Right. But at the same time, we've got to have cooperation to where people understand because I know you're right. Because all this stuff is washed in, then there can't possibly be any pooling at all. I mean, really and true, you don't have anywhere to put any water. And if you get a rain, you're right back in a really tough spot. You know, I went to Brazeton, which is down below Gilbert. Exactly the same story. Exactly the same story. You know, a long time ago, these walls were built on both sides of the creek. Creek's not very wide at all and everything. And they've had flood after flood after flood and more accumulation, more accumulation. And now the water's up within 10 inches of the road. Exactly. You know, now all of a sudden when it rains, boom, it's right into the house. Right. So there's a lot of folks here that are begging for help. They they want to be seen. They want to be heard. So what can you tell them? You know, is help on the way? Is it going to be a while? What should they know? Well, first of all, help's here. I mean, help is already here. Appreciate you know, that. and we we try to do anything and everything within our powers. Now you've got to understand this that a lot of a lot of times, whether it be our DEP or Homeland Security, the Guard, whomever it may be, you know. If you don't watch out, they're going to get handcuffed and everything, and they're not going to be able to do something because, you know, of maybe an administration that literally at the end of the day doesn't care much about Steve. And and that's not me, and I'll push it with all in me that I can possibly I push that. it. I do believe but, that. But it's, uh, it, you know, <laughs> we, we just have got to understand in this world that, uh, and we all want real goodness. We all want, we want, we want, we want all the stuff that we have, but some way, somehow, we can't just turn our back on Steve's of the world. We just can't do that, you know, because of whatever it may be. We've got to understand he has a right to live here. And when he probably came here, you know, that creek was probably a heck of a lot lower than in its elevation than it is than it is today. Let me follow up on that in just a second. Yeah. Steve, you're exactly right. We've already been, uh, Governor being very nice, we've already been threatened about killing salamanders or yeah. something. I don't know. I like yeah. salamanders to fish with. But, <laughs> but you can't uh, put you can't put the price of a fish no, no, on a human. No, sir. But no, here's here's the problem. Doing. Remember this though, let's put this in a little bit of what happened. We got more rain we've had since 1950, maybe two and a half times all at once, never before. This is a one-time event we haven't seen before. Number two, when it comes to dredging out the creeks, we've got some people say it makes it worse. You make them too deep, too wide, it runs more water. I'm not an expert, I don't know. But here's what we are doing under the governor's direction. We're gonna get the stuff out of the creek, the trees, the big falls, uh, stabilize the river bank, and that's why the governor is attempting to get a disaster declaration and we'll have money to do it. And meanwhile, we've been trying to take some trees out. We don't have them all out. We have taken out 500 pounds of, of debris out of here. Otherwise, that would be in the creek. So we've got some progress done, but you're exactly right. Nate. Well, I'd like to also say, Governor, that uh, you're right about your county uh, emergency team. Dave Armstrong and his group and, and all these uh, around here, they, they showed up. They were here within minutes when this rain, when this flood hit. Sure. And I, w I would like to say thank you to all those guys for that. 
They were here. So they, they hear were, you. They hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, he's one of you. Yes, he is. <laughs> That's why we sent him here. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. We really do. Appreciate you, Governor, for coming out here. Yeah. Oh, good. What did you think about what you saw so far? It's just one of our says. Tough. Really tough stuff. Now, these are great people, and they'll some way, somehow, they'll survive. But we should all know that, you know, they've gotten a real cannonball right to the stomach. And, and you know, we should we should absolutely know, let them know we're with them. And, uh, you know, I, I I keep going back to this, you know, the, we just got to do everything and anything we can to help. And I'll promise you, to God above, from my standpoint, I won't back up. I'll try to help every way I possibly can. I know you will. I believe you. I think you will, too. I believe that. Yes, ma'am. My name is Rebecca, and we made a uh, community organization out of the wake of this flood, Campbell right. Street Campus. Right. It's all community members. Right. Now, I myself have over 20 years' service in uh, emergency services. I've watched these guys come up with the rescue boats and get people off the porches, their roofs, everything. I've made a million calls to the county commission. Commissioner Salango is probably tired of answering my Facebook messages. Um, we've been screaming out for over a week about a veteran down by our grocery store who doesn't have hot water because he has feet of water in his basement and every pump that tries to take it out burns up. Who can we call? We keep saying the help's here, we'll do anything, but I've been screaming about Mr. Mollahan for over a week and we can't get any help to him. He's we will today. We, owe him we will today. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> I don't believe my got the call on that. I'll accept that as my fault. That's the local job fault, not the government. That's my fault. We'll take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, listen, I, I'll sit here all day with you, but, uh, but I'm not far away. I mean, you can throw a rock and hit me just about. So, so uh, we're not going to go away. That's all there's to it. You know, it's, it's uh, to be just brutally honest, it's going to take longer than any of us want. Right. <clears throat> no way around. <clears throat> because you want it done right this second, and I want it done right this second, and if it takes two seconds, it's going to take too long. Yeah, exactly. Now, we want to recognize all the great work that these folks behind me have done, right. and they'll continue to do. But it's still going to take us longer than what we think. And we're going to run into stumbling blocks just as sure as I know my name. You're going to run into whatever it may be. You know, it won't seem very fair, and it's not very fair. But we'll just try as hard as we can to just get through the stumbling blocks. And my dad used to always say, and I used to think, gosh, I can, I can hear it just like it was yesterday. And I really can. And, and y'all got to forgive me for using my dad's words, because this is exactly what he did. I was in front of his desk. You know, I was probably 18 or 19 years old. Believe it or not, I was skinny and my hair was brown. You know, and all of a sudden I said, Dad, there wasn't anything I could do. Well, Dad played a little bit of football for Purdue and he was a big chested guy, not as tall as me and not as heavy as me, but he was really strong. And he had a tie on and his, and his shirt sleeves rolled up to about here and everything. And when I said, Dad, there wasn't anything I could do, all of a sudden the whole desk exploded as he leaped forward and grabbed me around my shirt and just slammed me down on the desk. And he said, damn you, there's always something you can do and you better damn well always remember that. Yeah. Well, that's how I think. That's exactly how I think. And so, you know, maybe we lose, but we're gonna fight like crazy to not lose. We lose a little bit, but we'll win and we'll sure try. Well, Commissioner, is, was it my understanding then that you will not be doing dredging. What we've been doing. No, I don't. I don't remember saying that. Okay, I, that's uh, what I was said. I was asking. Every time you see a truck goes by, you can see we're doing something. The yeah. problem with dredging, right, is you've got to do it sensibly. Right. They have these experts. They're called hydrologists. Right. And uh, you've got the core you've got to deal with. You've got to deal with this one. Now we've got the authority, I guess, to just put bulldozers in, and start dredging. But there is a belief that if you're not careful, you can make it right. worse. Right. Yeah. Now. The creeks didn't cause the six and a half to seven or eight inches of water to fall. God exactly. did that. 
and the water hit hard and it had nowhere to go. And if you remember, you're up here early because you were, some of the water wasn't even in the creek, it was just coming down the mountain. So if it were that simple, we'd be out there for a cat right now. Right. But it'll be, we'll take a look at that. We always take a look at that, but they're always telling us to be careful. I believe the first thing we'll do when we get some funds to do it, we'll continue to try to clean out the creek with the trees and things like that. It used to be you had them full of white goods. Remember the old days with the refrigerators? You don't see sure. those now because the county spends about a million dollars a year doing a cleanup. That helps a little bit. The governor had the roads uh, dredge the sides. That's helped a little bit. But if it were that simple, I think the state would do it. It's not quite that simple. That's my answer on that. So basically what we're hearing is that you're going to hire um, some experts to find out if... They've got more studies. They're, they're bookcases in the state are lined with hydrological studies on how to stop it from flooding. The problem is it is a very complicated thing. What we're going to do now is continue. We've got to try to get a disaster declaration. That's where the... You see any red shirts of FEMA on them yet? No. We're hoping we'll have some funds to do that. And what we've been doing is working with the state, doing what we're supposed to do, following the guidelines. That's job one. If you get funding, then the experts come in and do certain things. But I don't believe we're going to dredge every creek in the county because I don't think that'll probably work. There's other things we probably need to do first. First, we need to get people homes back in some kind of shape if we can get the money to do it. That's job one. Yes. Thank you. Let me, let me, before you go, I want to say one other thing. And y'all, y'all continually tell all the experts around and everything that there is a thing called mitigation. And really and truly, you know, like it braised them, you know, the people said, you know, this used to be a really nice trout stream. And all the, all the, the silt and, and whatever has now risen so high and everything, it's no longer a trout stream, you know. But nevertheless, what I'm saying to you is, if we could do, do things that would involve some level of dredging, dredging and restoration through mitigation, to make it even better, to make it a really more pristine waters and pristine a, a trout stream type things. There's ways to do that. There's ways to do stuff through mitigation and everything and achieve what we all want to achieve. Do we have the authority? I mean, does, does the county have authority right now to, to uh, come in and dredge without environmental uh, issues? Probably, to be truthful. We have some authority in emergencies. It's not necessarily the environmental aspect. It's just how much you can do and where you go. And it's sure, a massive I, I thing. That. You're seeing what's in front of your house. I'm seeing a 911 square mile county with creeks all over the place. You know, cross lanes, Charleston, they all flood. They have supposedly up to date uh, systems. They flooded like crazy. Yeah. Well, we know that's not the county's fault or it's not the governor's fault. We had this much rain. We know that. We understand that. And we. Uh, very sympathetic toward that, but the fact of the matter is, our problems are personal. You know, I'm sure people down down the river, their problems are personal. We, we've got to take care of our problems here, and, and that's that's why we're questioning and, and asking all these questions about what we can and can't do. And we know what you're going to do. You were here when the, when the floods came. You were here. You were here on on time, and I appreciate that. I appreciate all the work you got to. I have people, we've got over 250 years experience in our emergency management department and I haven't heard any of them yet say so we just ought to start just going everywhere and digging out the creeks quite yet. Yeah. we got to take care of some things first. I mean, number one, let's face it, some people built things in the creek and plugged them up. Yeah. And some of them were your neighbors, to be honest about it. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we know you're the experts here. We're ready with our group to go boots on the ground to get to our elderly. Uh, we'll have our staff right here. They'll talk to you. Uh, you know Dave Armstrong, that little teeny guy? I sure do. <laughs> Snatch him. Long time. Okay. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Armstrong. Yes, sir. You heard about that veteran? Yes, sir. Today. Yes, sir. Thank you. That came yes, from the governor. He whispered in my ear. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Really good. No, no people could be more important. You know that. Another question is, and probably, I uh, probably haven't answered this already, but we can't dredge our own creek. We don't have that authority to do that, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, we don't have the creek police here. 
but you got to be careful. Because right. I tell you who will hold you accountable, your neighbor. They'll blame you for the next flood. <laughs> right. Just like, right. to be very honest about it, some of you would blame me if I went in there and just started running around with bulldozers, blocking stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, I think the point's well made and hopefully well taken, uh, but in actuality, if you would uh, just cross the next bridge down and look at the creek, difference being you're going to see it as it is today. We saw it as it was three months ago and we know it's not the same. I hear what you're saying but the creek filled up over this last six inches of rain or whatever the case may be. It sure did and you're yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and, and our concern, my, uh, Steve, my brother-in-law, my sister, they were trapped, totally trapped. They were not able to get to them by boat or anything. And if the Lord hadn't stopped the rain, uh, only God knows what would have happened to them. And now that same creek was here, is up to here, and it's not going to take six inches of rain the next time. I hear you. Okay, that's point, point well taken. That's why we're here. Okay, great. That's why the governor insisted that we come here. Right. We're grateful. Excellent. Let's... Uh, Let's get it done. Uh, we'll be to be We're all walking. Thank you all. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bless y'all. Thank you. Hey. <laughs>